In a world of glitz and glam, flashing lights and screaming fans, most people are unaware of the war that rages behind the scenes. And that war includes your favorite artist and your favorite songs. This is The Dark Side of Songwriting. Hosted by Naeem Edwards. Welcome to The Dark Side of Songwriting. My name is Naeem Edwards. I am your host. And today, I took the perk even though I knew it was fake. I don't care because I'm a super gremlin. Kodak Black lyrics already told us one his like is one of the biggest songs of his career that is like a mainstream big song. But he already told us what the deal was. It's not shocking Finn Neal was in his system because he already spelled it out. He's always come out and blatantly bragged about his drug use, blatantly told us what he was doing, what time he is on. And he also not only said it, but he showed us these things with his actions. This is my thing with Kodak. I don't know if I ever expressed this publicly or if I ever said this publicly about Kodak, but I always felt like the fact that when Cardi B came in and took no flocking and Cardi B is now turned into what she is, I felt like Kodak Black, that was a, it was, it was messed up for him, but I guess it's a decent business move because he got a writing credit for that song and he gets paid from the Bodak Yellow song. But I feel like he could be so much more. And I'm, but I can't talk to this nigga with no pity. And I can't talk to this nigga like I feel sorry for him. And I'm going to be for real. I feel like that's the problem when we have situations where not only are have we moved into this space where talking about drugs is okay. And I'm not saying that it's wrong, but we know it's not right. But bragging about taking fake pills is okay. Having fentanyl in your system because you probably took a fake pill is like... Why is anybody shocked? The fact that you could have died from this is one, just a whole separate conversation. Let somebody else have that. I want to talk about how this nigga keep doing the same shit and people keep coddling and pat him on the head, pat him on the back like, oh, it's okay because you didn't die. Actually, it's not. It's not okay because... You're going to find yourself, Kodak, in a situation like the baby where you do too much and you do so much that people get tired of you fucking up. People get tired of you making mistakes. People get tired of you getting in trouble and we're going to just move the fuck on and move away from it. It don't matter how much of a legend a nigga is and how much of a star and how big a nigga is and what a nigga can do in music. People get tired. People get tired of people not learning from their mistakes, not growing and not evolving. It doesn't matter what the fuck is going on. The shit gets old. Let's just be real, bro. This shit is getting old at this point with this nigga. You, you got... The chance of a lifetime being pardoned by Trump. This debt shit gave you a second chance at life because you was headed to prison again. Like, the fact that you can't stop. like, And we're not even talking about just the doing drugs and shit because you'll get off when you feel like it or you'll die. The thing is, you keep doing shit. And... Motherfuckers keep having to have a break and screaming free Kodak niggas is that shit is getting old. You're gonna have to stop and evolve. So my thing is this is gonna end either one or two ways. You're gonna find yourself losing your fan base, losing people believing in you, people getting tired of that bullshit that you be on, or you're gonna die. Be for, let's just be for good for real about it. He's gonna die, or people are gonna get tired of him because why is niggas still Oh, man, come on, man. You got to get it together. Nigga, fuck that. You want to do that? Leave this pussy nigga in the dust because it's stupid fucking behavior. You already got cheated out of your song. You're already getting cheated out of your mask. This nigga doesn't own anything. You're already getting cheated out of your money. You are not 
you're a priority at Atlantic Records, but you're not in the position that you should be in for the amount of hit records and the amount of good music that you put out and the amount of the support that you have because everything that you make got to go to legal fees. Everything that you make got to go to a settlement. Everything that you make got to go to fines. Everything that you make got to go to fake pills. Every fucking dollar that you make got to go to a retainer for a lawyer. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. And it's at that point that when you're not doing what you're supposed to do, where it's almost like you you taking your blessing for granted. You're taking the fact that niggas like you are not supposed to be successful. We have to be serious about it. Be all that wild, erratic, crazy fucking behavior is just getting fucking old. And the people around you are enabling you. And this is the dark side of it. It's because you have somebody who is actually who they say they is coming through the door, right? You have somebody who it's not traditional how it's supposed to be packaged. The packaging and the pre the presentation and the delivery of what's going on is not how society say it's supposed to be. You inspire and encourage and people look up to you and you're not exactly the pit, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like this isn't somebody that people supposed to be looking up to, but they are. And you're taking that position in life for granted. Niggas ain't saying come out here and be no role model. Niggas ain't saying nothing, do none of that. But them people around you are fucking enabling you. Them people, them people around you are allowing this shit to go on because they scared that they're going to get kicked off the tour bus. They scared that somebody going to come in and take something from them. Or niggas is going back to Pompano. And, or niggas is going back to Liberty City or wherever the fuck the niggas around you is from. I know where you're from. But... They're scared to say something. They don't want to say something because they're going back to the block if it's over for them. You're going to continue to live in California and do whatever the fuck you want to and have some type of a life as long as you're producing for Atlantic Records. As long as you're doing whatever the label say. is because the minute you try to walk away, that's going to be over for you. And that's, you know, that's just a little surprise surprise to people who don't know how this shit go. The minute this nigga try to go independent or do something by himself is a wrap. Like all the shit is going to come down on his head. All the shit is going to come crumbling to an end. But the people around you are enabling you. They don't care because they're scared to say something because they're yes men. You don't care. It's just getting old. It's just getting old bro. Like this shit is old. It got real old Real motherfucking fast. Real old, real fast. Like, this nigga. This nigga. It is what it is. Maybe we'll get lucky and he actually does die. Like, let's just be for real. Like, maybe we'll get lucky and he does die. Because that will teach people about glorifying nonsense. Because... God, this whole notion of bragging about taking a fake pill is just what got me. Like, I never thought we would see the day where people actually bragged about taking counterfeit medicine. So maybe we will get lucky if he does get the fuck out of here because I, d I just think it's, it's just real crazy. But it's not shocking. It's just going to continue to happen. And there's only two ways the cycle's going to end. People going to walk away or he going to die. So that's the dark side of all of this. Anyway, my name is Naeem Edwards. I will holler at you.